Hi, I'm Tavia, and I'm here at Creasy May Hand Nature Preserve's Woodland Garden. It's spring, and it's a perfect time to come here, take a walk, sit down, relax, listen to the bird song, and particularly enjoy the plants. We've got two acres, mostly native wildflowers and ferns. And today we're talking about false Solomon seal. I happen to be kneeling in a large patch of it. It's really a spectacular woodland garden plant. It likes moist, shade, partly shaded areas, but actually it can adapt to even a drier condition. It's happiest though in a condition like this with really good, rich soil. Let's take a look at it. The reason it's called false Solomon seal is because it has a passing resemblance to another native wildflower called, what do you, what do you think? Solomon seal. Let's take a look at this one. The main difference, oh, we have a little mayfly on the end of this. The main difference with the false Solomon seal is that the flowers are at the end of the stem. Whereas Solomon seal flowers drop like little bell-shaped urns underneath the plant. So false Solomon seal is easy to spot. Plus, note the zigzagging in between of the stem in between the leaves. Can you spot that in a slight reddish tint to it? Slightly zigzag. The leaves themselves are quite lovely with that smooth, just a few lines, slightly shiny. It's approximately two feet tall. And I just love how most of them angle the same direction. The flowers are slightly fragrant. You have to trust me on that one. Not like a rose, but they're fragrant to their favorite pollinators, which are little bitty bees in particular, and a few flies. Tip, a lot of white flowers, funny enough, do attract the little bitty beetles, flies, and small bees. Interesting, isn't it? White. So anyhow, also the Native Americans used false Solomon seal. They collected the roots and the leaves and they made medicinal teas. All right, everybody, enjoy. Happy gardening. Bye.